So Africa, that's the opportunity we have. If you put one seed on the soil, have a water, it germinates. Then what do you want again? But when you go to Europe, their land size is small, but they use that land sizes over 100 ages, but they are still planting. But our lands are virgin land. So what, what, what prevents well, us? Then what do you think is wrong with us then? My brother, it's a pleasure meeting you. It's a pleasure to welcome you too. Thank you. I mean, I just want to ask you a question. When you hear the name Africa, what comes into your mind? Ah, Africa, we are blessed. The reason why I'm saying that we are blessed, we have a vast land, have every opportunity, rainfall. Even if there's a disease escalate in the whole world, Africa, how God has made us, we are strong to stand with that disease. For example, see the COVID, see what happened. <laughs> if you see the numbers, Africa will still remain. So you want to say that it's a blessing to come from Africa? It's a blessing to come from Africa. Me, I'm proud to be in Africa. When I travel, I travel to 28 countries apart from Africa country, but I don't spend more than one month. Why? In one week. I'm dreaming about Africa, dreaming about what I'm doing. I love to be in Africa. You have the biggest exporter of potato, sweet potato in Ghana. How does that make you feel? I'm proud to develop. I want to cover entire Africa and the whole world to know that what the people can do over there and abroad, we can do it here. And I want to stop migration. People have to be traveling all the way, going to Accra or going to travel outside abroad, want to make a living. I'm telling my colleagues, young people, that we can make a living in Africa, in Ghana. Does it mean that it's possible to make it in Ghana? It's possible. That's what I'm doing now. Just understand the concept. Everything is commitment and time. When you go and meet the people outside the country, maybe you go and meet people in Europe, what we are doing here, the same thing they are doing, but they are committed. They have the passion and love for it. That's what, that's the magic. But a lot of people don't understand it in that way. Are Everybody you... wants to be in a tire, drive V8. Driving the V8, they don't have the means to fuel the car. It's a big challenge. So, Africa, we have opportunity to do whatever we can do here and export to the whole country, the whole world, the whole Africa. I've been telling Africans that agriculture is the future. And agriculture is more like a gold mine for Africans. But this is a situation that Africans don't take agriculture serious because we think that being a farmer is, is equal to being a poor man. Do you think that Africa is the, uh, like, do you think that um, agriculture is the future? Agriculture is the future. I don't buy the mindset that if you are doing farmer or you are farmer, <laughs> you remain poor. It's never true. The kind of opportunity this agriculture gave it to me, with my family, is a super. Especially the sweet potato. I call sweet potato super food because it has vitamin A. It has everything. We have to understand the concept be educating the people around Africa. Mm. The agriculture is a business. It's a number one. It's a blessing even from God. If you want to translate it in the Bible, you see Solomon is rich out of farming. Mm. So what is wrong for we? cannot take agriculture serious. We have to take it agriculture serious. So Africa, that's the opportunity we have. If you put one seed on the soil, have a water, it germinates. Then what do you want again? But when you go to Europe, their land size is small, but they use that land sizes over 100 ages. But they are still planting. But our lands are virgin land. So what, what, what well, prevents well, us? Then what do you think is wrong with us then? One for two is coming from our leaders. Because if you don't have an embryo environment or good policy to help the farmer, it's a challenge. Maybe I bring equipment at the port. I want to use it to do farming. The kind of investment I've put in to clear the goods, bring it to the farm, is already take the capital. But if the government or African leaders have a good policy and to favor the farmers, I think we informal sector we can employ more than even the government sector so the problem is the good policy if you have good policy in the country we are good to go but some of african country number one ghana we don't have a good policy a farmer like me have workers 86 workers have to be paying even pay tax to the government because there's no exemption anymore on farming 
So every year you have to pay something to the government. Where the government have to come, look, I want this sector to look very good. You are bringing foreign currency to the country to help in us. Because the government used that foreign currency, our export as a guarantee, go to IMF, go to donors to get money. We have a policy in paper by implementation. Nothing is happening. That's the big challenge we have. My name is Felix Kamasa Maoli. Mm -hmm. uh, I'm the I, I, I'm the founder of Mafli Trust Ghana Limited. Okay. Uh, my part from Georgia and Keta. That's where I'm coming from. And then uh, I found this business together with my wife. Her Whoa. name is uh, Gifty Kafi Mensa. She is the human resources manager. Uh, actually, this initiative start 2013, mm -hmm. uh, where the, um, I've, I've decided to stop my work at previous place, UT Bank, to start this initiative, and we start looking for the land. You were the... you were a banker. Yes. I and was. you decided to quit and become a farmer. Yes. Sorry, I have so many brothers out there. They said I should ask you: Is everything okay with you? <laughs> <laughs> because you everything know, is okay. Because we, we love being in well, serious. Yes, I, 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 no, I want that. It's not everybody who can be in the bank. Okay. Because sometimes when they bring, you are working, they bring you your lunch. You see the kind of vegetable and all where it's coming from. My idea is that do I know where those produce are coming from? So one of my idea is that if we are eating quality vegetable, it's no need the government to be spending so much having a policy want to build one district one hospital one agenda what what because vegetable is good for our health hmm. so i choose vegetable part that everything we eat every day there's something coming from vegetable so beginning was tough but realize now we have a lot of team hmm. i have 86 staff feminine staff have operation manager have account officer you said your wife helped you establish the company. Yeah. You know what, when you were working in a bank and then you told your wife that you want to quit and become a farmer, did she... She also is a teacher, she also resigned and joined me. So it's something we look at it and I see that the vision will come together. She stopped teaching and she even forced to learn as agronomy now. She trained a lot of women, trained a lot of workers. And you'll be amazed, we come out with some product called sweet potato gary. When yeah, you go there, I, yes, yes. We use the reject of the potato when we export the reject one. We use it for processing gari. Let's give a round of applause to your wife. Yeah, a round of applause. <laughs> I know you're gonna watch this video, and I really love women that really support their husbands, yeah. and that's why I'm giving you a round of applause. Yeah. Let me know now. You have your farm is the biggest exporter of sweet potatoes. Yeah. What else do you grow apart from sweet potatoes? Oh, uh, we grow okra. We grow chili pepper, we grow turia, Asian vegetable, we call it bitter god family. We grow cucumber, we grow cabbage, you go and see some of them in the greenhouses. You, we grow bed eye, we grow about 22 crops in this farm. We do a little of coconut, we do a little of mango, we do yam, so you can see that's the yam the women are planting, my guys are planting, and I like working with women a lot. So when you go to the greenhouse, you see women doing pruning because they take their time. Some particular job we give it to women. They take their time to do it very well. Women work hard, but uh, you know us, we work like we are fighting with somebody giving box. But women. women, they take their time and they'll do it and do it very well, accurate. They, like, you know, you see the yeah. yam? Mm. This whole mountain that they are planting the yam on, why though? Why? That you have to make this whole mountain. Yeah, it will have a free movement to, to grow, yes, to grow and then not to have to it's hit stone, stone and then stone. it will look straight to meet the spot market. Okay. Mm. I have a smallholder farmers, about 86 smallholder farmers. What we do to the smallholder farmers, we call it outgrowers. What we do for them is that we plow for them, we give them planting material, mm. we give them fertilizer. So when the produce is ready, we buy for them. So we monitor them closely. So when you get to Keta, you can visit some of them, Keta and Logan Way. We have some of the smallholder farmers there. So which means that when you plow and do everything for them, you buy the... We buy the produce. So we already immediately, we train you, give you the planting material. We sign a contract. We have a contract. We know the price before you are producing. 
when it's ready we we'll buy our car load it then we we'll package then we we'll ship we we'll take that offload because what we realize is that most of Ghanaians market is a challenge we mm. have the market we mm. are not even mm. able to sustain the market mm. but we don't produce according so that's why we are trying to bring that bridge and close it together so that the farmer also is happy we also be happy we are not there to cheat the farmer they understand they see the production call we have analysis for every production call every crop we do here we have analysis and see whether it's profitable if it's not profitable we advise you do this crop we are the market so we are going to take it what type of farming are you practicing in here yes we have two food of farming we mm -hmm. have organic and inorganic mm -hmm. if i said inorganic that's a conventional some of the chemical we use is a conventional and we have organic for particular the niche market that organic market is not big but we have it in the niche market when you go to the greenhouse most of the tomatoes they are organic our tomatoes you can leave it in the fridge for one month two months is there without rotting mm. yes people have testified they know the kind of tomatoes it is. We'll go and see the super cherry we have there. Definitely, you can try it definitely. But, but how many acres are you? Um, I mean, for this, this whole farm, this, how many acres? This, uh, the whole in Thailand is around 1,900 acres. But at the moment, we are cultivating 600, 600 acres. By the close of this year, we want to hit all the 1,900. So when you go down, you know, we do cassava, we, do, we brand it. We, we don't focus on one product, we do crop rotation. Okay. So you see some of the place they have maize, cassava, and then we use it. So by the close of the year, this year particular, we want to cultivate all the land. But, uh, yeah, now I want to know how it all started. First of all, we are in the Volta region. Hmm. Why the Volta region then? Uh, I look at it that I'm native from this Volta region. I, I always said that Votarian too can do and make African proud, make Ghana proud and African proud. Mm. So we said no, let's start people pull me, let's go to North. We have some land at the North Bar. I said no, let's start from the Vota region. So we start gradually. Those times it's not easy. All this place you are seeing is like a forest. But people thought that we can pull the forest down and make it as a use. We were able to put it down and make it now where we are. So we start gradually. I come with my wife who we'll come sometime rain will beat us our car will have a problem we we'll remain in the farm we we'll leave the farm around sometimes when you rain heavily the car will start we can't even move we'll be calling the tractor drivers to come and help us before they will come then it's around around eight nine imagine you have a woman to be with you in a forest somebody who is also a graduate and leave his teaching work feel comfortable holding marker by leaving a teaching work to join you in the bush it's a mess, but yeah. I always give glory to God. Do I need a lot of money to start agriculture? No, you don't need a lot of money. Yeah, you have to start gradually. Beginning, we go around the bank looking for money. The bank will come, they will come back, put your book in order, do this, have a business plan, do this. You do the business plan, they will come back. But now we see the light. People contact us and we got some investment last time. Even USAID even support us with some grants. We are here to receive the grant, mm. but it's, it's okay. Uh, that doesn't mean that when you started, you didn't have the funds. Yeah, we start with our own fund, small fund, where we know that that's our capacity on the 20 acre scale. Gradually, we are expanding. Gradually, we are expanding because, you know, bankers, they want numbers and figures. Mm. And then the profit margin, they look at the margin. But since I have gone, leave that industry beyond the food. I've always, when I meet colleagues, I tell them it's good area, but it's commitment and time. When the person is good, you just support him, you see the reality. Because export market, it depends on volume, depends on the profit. Yeah. But the bank, they didn't see that. They see the kind of inflow is coming before they start talking to you, talking business. What is the major challenge that you face? doing this farm and the major challenge in at the uh, uh, exportation and all of that what is that major yes challenge i'll idea? start from the production production the big challenge is a capital to get equipment because ghana you know we don't have the right equipment one of my focus is that the assembly is around why can't the government support the assembly bring equipment if i need equipment to do a major work i go to the assembly pay something to them get it have access to it if i want it in my grower, they rent it for me it's a big challenge. Mm. And the second challenge is that after we're able to succeed, the produce, have a good produce, export is one of the challenges. 
Ghana, we don't have our own cargo. Kenya have its own uh, Kenya Airway. Yeah. Rwanda have its own uh, uh, cargo. When you Ethiopia. go to Ethiopia, the same thing. You go to South Africa, the same thing. But Ghana, we rely on the passenger cargo. Passengers, uh, our mission is passenger cargo because if, for example, there's a, a booking for KLM and the plane is full, that means my produce cannot go because they pick a luggage. The space they use as a cargo for the passengers, bags. the bags, that's, that's the right. space we also use. As at, as at now, so it's a big challenge. And our air freight, very expensive. Before COVID, we are paying 80 cents. Now we are paying $1.70, double of the price. But when you go to Kenya, it's not like that. Because the Kenya government say, hey, fruit and vegetable and flour, that bring a lot of dollars to the country. They have a, a, a cargo flight purposely for fruit and vegetable. So they solve a great problem for the industry. Ghana, can we do the same thing? I know Ghana Export Promotion have a non-traditional export document mm. Mm. as part of the, do, uh, the people to draft the document. But it's a long term initiative. We need the solution now. now. Because the buyers, when they sign up with you and you're able to sustain them two years, and the second year, you delay about six months, they are looking somewhere because they also sign up with uh, other distributors. So that's the big challenge we have now. What well, I think that the government have to look at it critically understand the practical people those people who practice like how the doctors be in the hospital mm. do their practice they should look the farming the industry players like that come to them don't come to academic people they will do research which the research which is not valuable but, to the industry but, but, but i thought the A afctc have their headquarters in accra so logistics moving around will be quite easy it's great to have the office but at the moment which commodity are we trading to have a statistics to know that I prophesize that the next five years, if Ghana didn't take time, they'll move that office to other Cote d'Ivoire or, or why, why or, are you or, saying so? Then? Or Nigeria. Why are you saying My so? problem is that as they start already, do we identify the industry players who trade among ourselves to Togo, Benin, and no? One of the big challenge too, when I export, I export to Cote d'Ivoire. If there's a payment, you have to go to the corresponding bank my corresponding bank, maybe Citibank hmm. in US before they would direct the money to Ghana. Where Cote d'Ivoire is here, I can live the, today that I'm going to Cote d'Ivoire, I arrive in Cote d'Ivoire. It's one of the big challenges, our payment system. I learned one of the bank is coming up to work on that. I raised that, this issue several times. Those are the things they have to do first. Is it feasible? Let's try it before, because already when I export to UK, some of the payment I can get it the following day. But Côte d'Ivoire, you have to go to their corresponding bank. Are you Do trying to link those things together already? Are you trying to say that the AFCTC is just on paper? It's, they are not practicing it. Yes, we have to. Yeah, we are not practicing it because they are tagging on those Casapreku. Everybody knows Casapreku is, is have been in the Nigeria market yeah, long yeah. ago. They use those those uh, company. They are using uh, NS Chemistry. Everybody knows yes, that NS, NS Chemistry, chemistry is there been. already. Can we play along with uh, new mm. companies who are coming, have a, a potential export in uh, South Africa, Benin, Togo, Nigeria? What commodity Benin is doing or Togo is doing, Ghana is not doing? Can we look at that and trade on it? Because people come from Togo, sometimes come and buy the, the, the sweet potato plant, uh, the, the leaf, because they use the leaf like a contumely, they use it because you have the high vitamin. Mali, Malawi do that. Oh, we have this in Ghana. Can we trade it on that? It's a big challenge. The barrier we have in terms of uh, transport locally, because I've been in ECOWAS, member of a task force for transporting tomatoes from uh, Burkina coming to Ghana. Sometimes those barriers, when you get to Bobo Janshi, you have to pay and some of the marketing women have to call. This is a challenge. Do we remove those barriers already? Have a correct document, the correct system? Or originated of goods, do we finish have a software of that? If I want to export sweet potato to Burkina Faso to enter immediately, then I can have my serial number or 13 digit number. Do we have those things in place? Can we do this? Um, you all should first of all like the video and let's share this video so that we can use this video to what solve the problems that farmers are facing in 
Africa in general, especially Ghana. Do me a favor, first of all, like the video, share, tag the necessary people that are involved so that we can um, get a solution that we are all looking for, for farmers in Africa. I mean, for the sake of people who are watching us for the first time, what is Greenhouse all about? The Greenhouse is just like a protected area where you can grow your product pest free because this is cover area so pests cannot come in. Okay. So it's less chemical, you won't use chemical for it to control the pest. Like it's an open field, you won't see the produce beautiful like this. Mm. Even when you harvest open field like outside, you plant outside, the plant life doesn't last longer. You, you, when you plant it here, you have a good yield, have a good volume, have a, a good a, a shelf life of the tomatoes. So how many tomatoes do you produce in, uh, to the, like in terms of harvesting? Uh, the life cycle of this tunnel, we, are, we call it tunnel 2. So we, we are hitting 6, uh, six ton per tunnel season. Hmm. Yeah. Will you say that it's a recreative business? Yeah. Because it's <laughs> greenhouse tomatoes, everybody know. Everybody wants to eat quality food. It's organic, the shelf life. So it's a, it's a good, but it's capital intensive because this one tunnel we are now is around $12,000 one, which we have about 40 of them. We have another one 80. We want to hit 60. That's our target. So 40 is ready now for cultivation. That's what we are doing. And does it mean that when you plant in a greenhouse, you produce more? You produce more and then the shelf life of the plant also lasts longer. Okay. You know, this, we don't plant them in on the ground. Mm. You see that we plant them in a bucket. Yeah. It's a protected area where it's out of pests. So we control, it's like a baby, mm. like a child is growing. How you give him correct nutrients, you follow his step. How does it feel being a farmer whenever you come into your own farm? Oh, I feel happy, joy, like the whole day. I don't feel like eating. You see me going around. I go around. I come to farm early. By 4 o'clock, I'm around. Early morning, I want to see how the plants look before the sun. Um, then I study. Then I ask my workers, this is what I see. Can we move on? That joy alone. Then my stomach is full. The whole day, I won't eat up to evening time. I normally eat in the evening. If I'm around, I'm in the farm. I eat, unless my wife is with me. Oh. And she cook around in the farm. Then she will be calling me and she come and eat. You know the women, they have power. You have to obey I mean, in that second time. But if she's not part of the whole, they won't eat up to eat. Where do you get your irrigation from? How do you do irrigation? Yes, water? this uh, the, we have two fold of irrigation. Hmm. The greenhouses we are using borehole. We have eight borehole around, so we are using borehole. Open field. We, we pump. We have our own dam. We pump from the dam for the open field. So the greenhouse, they are living on boho. And um, because the, we need a clean water. And the potatoes? The potato, we are using a, a dam, dam for it. We have a dugout, which we pump water for. But there is no electricity in this yes, area? Yes, we use a generator. We spend so much on uh, the fuel. You know, the increased fuel again. So that's what people don't understand. That's why I said, when we have a good policy, it cut across. Every, it affects every business. Because just yesterday, before my operation manager called me, they went and get fuel. He saw the receipt. He said, hey, sir, they increased fuel again. So you'll be, it will be amaze you every week. Every two weeks, we spend about 22000 on uh, fuel. I always tell people that farming is not that having the, uh, a lot of capital, mm. but it's a passion and love. It's just that you have one child, or how you love your mom, or you love your wife. You give the same training to the farm, you are good to go. I mean, when I come here, you see me at work, I'm, I'm among the workers, you even know I'm the one even managing the farm. Oh, it's a passion and love. That's a, that's a trick. Are you looking forward to establish your own processor in here? Yes, that's one of my agenda this year. The sweet potato we want to process. You know, Ghana, Africa, we eat a lot of bread. So sweet potato, we want to use the reject to process to puree. The puree, they use it for bread. Mm. They use it for uh, chips. They use it for yogurt. We have sweet potato yogurt. I've, I, I've contacted a farm mark, want to supply, but they want me to put up the factory. That's my vision. I'm also looking at it. If I get a good investment, 
I've got an invoice for the, the equipment already. Do you need invest, investors to invest yeah, in your business? Yeah, yeah, yeah. You know, I have so many African diaspora who would love to invest in your business. And Good. are yeah, you welcome. hoping for that? I'm hoping for that. The, those investors, those who want to invest, come through me so that I can get 1%. <laughs> <laughs> We have so many young Africans who are looking forward in, to venture into agriculture. If you have a message to them, what would that message be? Yes, I even have an opportunity for them getting some land to develop. Get them the input and everything. I buy the produce, I know the market. Guide them what they're supposed to do so that we'll be in the same page. What so they should come down, we talk because we train a lot of youth here. You want, we, can, we, we will help them to have access to land. Okay. We'll help them to develop it. Then we buy the produce from them. So which means that they, they, they bring the money? Even non, not necessarily the money. We we'll help them if we we'll help them. One concept we are running, we want to run is that the youth will plow the land for you, give you the input, you guide it with your small investment you have. When you come, the kind of budget you can get, we can guide you, support you planting material, see then we we'll buy the produce. It's yeah. only my message to the leaders, African leaders. Listen. What is that message that you are yearning within you that you want to tell them? Because they all watch my videos. Yes. What would that message be? They should look agriculture as their priority. You all have heard him right. Look agriculture as the major priorities because agriculture is the way to go. Whoa! That's a new statement from the man himself. Thank you so much for watching. And uh, where did they, where can they find you? Uh, they can find me at uh, our farm located at Vota Regi, mm -hmm. Katu North District. Mm -hmm. But we have our administrative office in Accra, Achimota, opposite Osafo Kantaka in showroom. We are direct opposite to them. But anything, everything going, operation going in the farm. Mm. So if they are looking for me, they should come to the farm. Thank you so much for watching. Don't forget to like the video. It's very important to me. Subscribe and be part of the Million Family. Share the video. Let the world see what Mr. Felix Kamasa Maoli has done in the Vota region. My name is still Mr. Ghana Baby, the one and only annoying village boy from Ghana. It's rather unfortunate I went to the farm and I'm still wearing my slippers. I'll see you all in the next one. Bye.